This is a case example of a dog with a prostatic carcinoma. If you haven't already watched our other video on a dog with a prostatic abscess, I would recommend you watch that first. And that's because the beginning of that video does spend some time talking about the anatomy um, and goes over a few things that I will not be repeating here. So this is Snoopy. He's an 11-year-old castrated male beagle, and he had a one-month history of straining to urinate. So we started with two view radiographs. Um, on this radiograph, we can see that caudal to the urinary bladder. This is the bladder right here. We've got this um, mass with multiple mineral amorphous foci, and this mass is also causing compression of the descending colon. So in a male dog, you see a mass caudal to the urinary bladder in this location. The prostate should be the first thing on your mind. Other thing we can kind of get the impression of on this radiograph, despite there being superimposed bowel, you get the impression of little mineral foci superimposed over the bladder. Um, but again, with the superimposed bowel, it's not clear whether this is within bowel or within the bladder. And similarly, you get superimposed mineral over the region of the kidneys. So you at least should have the concern for um, mineralized bladder and kidney debris. On the orthogonal view, again, we're going to see some mineral right here, which is not clearly associated with the pelvis, and that's representing mineral in our prostatic mass. On the medial aspect of our left ilium, we have some new bone formation, which is concerning in a dog with prostatic carcinoma, as I'll discuss later, because we worry about metastatic disease there. And also, you can more clearly see here, as you see the urinary bladder displace off to the side, that these mineralized foci are clearly within the urinary bladder. So this dog does have um, cystic calculi, or at least mineralized urinary bladder debris. So this is a relatively brief video. Um, when this video starts, we're going to be looking at the urinary bladder here. So we've got the lumen of the bladder, and we've got dependent hyperechoic mineralized debris in the bladder. And then we'll move caudally, and we'll see the prostate as well. So again, we've got the lumen of the bladder here. We've got fluid in the bladder and dependent hyperechoic mineral. And as we move caudally, we are seeing here this enlarged heterogeneous prostate that's just caudal to the urinary bladder. And within this prostate, we got multiple hyperechoic foci. And if you notice that deep or distal to these hyperechoic regions, we just get shadowing. We have no um, sound waves that are penetrating deep to that. So if you have hyperechoic foci with distal acoustic shadowing, you should be strongly concerned that this is mineralized foci within this mass. And right here, again, we're seeing this heterogeneous prostate. And we'll spend a little bit more time looking at that here. Um, so again, large heterogeneous prostate, caudal to urinary bladder, multiple hyperechoic foci with distal shadowing. So this is very concerning for a prostatic neoplasia with mineralization within it. Um, again, right here, it's so looking at this more in trans right here, so we're going to kind of get a long view of the prostate right there. So um, the next few images are just different dogs, which so just kind of showing you the variability of the things we can see with prostatic carcinoma. So in most of these image, images, you're going to see the colon coursing dorsal to the prostate. You've got in this one here, you've got the caudal aspect of the urinary bladder leading into your urethra, and then you have your prostate here with hyperechoic mineral foci. Different case here, just a zoomed in image of another dog. Again, colon dorsal to your prostate. And you've got a large heterogeneous prostate with hyperechoic mineral foci. Again, mineral foci, so you're noticing a theme here, a lot, uh, we're seeing these heterogeneous prostates with mineral within them. In our final case of another dog, we're getting caudal aspect of bladder leading into prostate, and this is a prostate in long and in trans, and again, hyperechoic regions with distal shadowing. So when we talk about prostatic neoplasia, adenocarcinoma is the most common tumor. Less commonly, but sometimes seen tumors include undifferentiated carcinomas, transitional cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and then even lymphoma or hemangiosarcoma. Prostatic neoplasias are typically locally invasive, um, and they can cause constipation because, as we saw in the radiograph of the dog in this um, case, it can cause compression of the colon, and also, as you might imagine, it can cause urinary obstruction if it obstructs the urethra. Prostatic neoplasia, or specifically prostatic carcinoma, um, has an 80, is 80% of the time metastatic, and it metastasized to the regional lymph nodes, including the medial iliac or other sublumbar lymph nodes, to the lungs, and also causes a un relatively unique, there are a few other cancers that do similar things, um, these osteoproductive skeletal metastases to the pelvis and the lumbar vertebrae. So if you think back to the um, dog in this case, he had that new bone on the medial aspect of his ilium. This is an example of a different dog, just kind of bring home the metastasis point. So in this dog, you can see this mass caudal to the urinary bladder with foci mineral. But really, the important point here is you're seeing all this irregular, amorphous new bone 
ventral to the lumbar vertebrae, along the ilium, and also ventral to the caudal vertebrae. So this is, you know, different than the normal smooth spondylosis deformans um, and is a feature of metastatic disease from a prostatic carcinoma. On ultrasound, as we saw, you'll typically see an enlarged prostate with post-side mineralization. The prostate gland itself will be heterogeneous in echogenicity. The fat around the prostate can sometimes be hyperechoic, and you will sometimes see, as you know, if it metastasizes, sublumbar lymphadenopathy. So it's important not just to look at the prostate, but then to scan cranially and start looking at the sublumbar lymph nodes. There was a recent paper in veterinary radiology and ultrasound that was looking at the relationship between prostatomegaly, prostatic mineralization, and the final diagnosis. Um, and they found some interesting things that I think are important to keep in mind. So when they were looking at neutered dogs, they found that prostatic um, disease in a neutered dog that had mineral within it had a 100% positive predictive value, 84% sensitivity, and 100% specificity for neoplasia. So again, if you have a neutered dog, mineral in his prostate, you should be highly concerned about a neoplastic process. It's slightly different though in intact dogs. So in intact dogs, if there was no mineralization, it was 96% negative predictive value, 67% sensitive, and 77% specific for not being cancer. However, intact dogs can get mineralization within their prostate from non-cancerous diseases such as chronic prostatitis or other disease processes that will cause dystrophic mineralization. So it's important to kind of have this distinction in the back of your mind. If you have a neutered dog and you see mineral, you should be highly concerned for cancer. If you have an intact dog and you don't see mineral, you should put cancer lower on your list. Um, but if you see mineral, don't automatically assume it is cancer in an intact dog. That is the end of this talk on prostatic carcinoma. Um, again, if you haven't already watched the other video on a dog with a prostatic abscess, I would recommend you watch that to get a better understanding of the anatomy and also to see how different prostatic diseases look on ultrasound.